What's up, Pharma family? How y'all doing today? Today, we are checking out the Hudef Viva Pro Gen 3. This is their elongated paddle. I have a code for this company. It's Farmer. If you use that at checkout, you'll get a 15% discount. I will get a kickback from that. Thought I should let you guys know that. I also want to let you guys know that this is a mix of Kevlar and raw carbon fiber. Companies are coming out with that like crazy. I'm going to make comparisons to the Pro Energy Line S. Haha, <laughs> I still said the name wrong. <laughs> I got caught out on that the other day and I was like, I'm going to do better. Nope. And I'm going to compare it to the Mark 1 and the Azul. So, let's get into this. I hope y'all been doing good. Alright, when it comes to the pop, this is how I would describe it. It is essentially an elongated Azul or Mark 1. Now, the other paddle you could make a comparison to or talk about since they have similar surfaces is the Proline Energy S. They have a Kevlar slash raw carbon fiber blend. The only difference is it is more plush and the ball doesn't, you know, come off the face as quick as it does with the Hue Death Fever Pro 2, the Ozil, and the Mark 1. Just beware this has a stiffer face, so when it comes to control, you'll hear me talk about that. But yeah, this face is definitely stiffer than the Pickleball Apes paddles, for sure. And I would say it's right on par with the Mark 1 and the Azul. Now, in terms of power. When I played with the Viva Pro 2 and went between this paddle and it, I didn't even really notice a power difference, to be honest. There might have been a slight difference in terms of power for the Viva Pro 3. It might have been slightly more powerful. But then again, it wasn't even enough to actually tell a difference. Both of these have really, really, really good plow through. So you're not going to have any problems. I consider these power paddles, to be honest, both of them. So the power's there. That's not going to be a problem at all. That's actually one of the shining parts of this paddle is the power. All right. When it comes to the control, I'm going to put this closer to the Mark 1 and the Azul like really close in terms of control. The face is a little bit stiffer. You're going to have to focus a little bit more, but if you can get used to the stiffness of the face and maximize, you know, and get control of it, the extra little bit of pop you're getting from this will be better. Now, the other paddle that is similar to this or similar in the way the paddle face is made is the Pro Energy Line series. You have the Pro Energy Line, then you got the Pro Energy Line S. The Protege Line S is a hybrid. The other version is elongated. Those two are both a lot more plush and controllable compared to this one, the Mark 1, and the Azul. The Mark 1, the Azul, and this, I would put all three together in terms of control, to be honest. When it comes to the spin, it got 1,992 RPMs. That puts it in the top 10 of the paddles out of all the paddles that I've tested so far in terms of spin. I think I'm up to 23 or 24. But yeah, anything above 1800 is going to give you adequate spin. That's not anything you're going to have a problem with. I know these Kevlar or Kevlar raw carbon fiber blend paddles that people are coming out with. People are wondering how the spin's going to be, but it seems to be literally on par with all the Gen 2 paddles that are raw carbon fiber that came out. When it comes to the swing weight of this, the swing weight is 125. Okay, this is in the higher end in terms of elongated paddles. But if you like elongated paddles, I don't think 122 to 124 or 122 to 125 is going to be a drastic difference. If you're strong enough to get the paddle around with other elongateds, this is going to be right down your alley. If you played with the Hudef Viva Pro 2, this is one swing weight higher, or the ones I received are. So it's literally identical in terms of swing weight. The overall weight of this paddle is 8 ounces. This is a heavy paddle. I would mostly probably use it for singles, but there are people who aren't made of sticks. They can probably get it around a little bit better than I can. In terms of twist weight, it had a 6.48 twist weight. 6.5 is technically considered average, but 6.5 and 6.6 .6 is usually what we get when we get hybrid shaped paddles. And the fact that this one's so close to being right on line with average and right there with some of the hybrid shape paddles means it's got a really good twist weight. Now, in terms of the actual sweet spot, it has a really, really good sweet spot as well. If you heard my Viva Pro 2 review, you heard me mention how the sweet spot is on par with all the other elongated paddles. I feel like this sweet spot is basically exactly the same, to be honest. 
Couldn't tell a difference. I switched switch between both of them for like two weeks straight. When it comes to value for your money, this is $169.99 without the 15% discount. So it gets cheaper. Like y'all know, I don't really like recommending anything that's above 200. This is below that threshold. It is a really good paddle if you like elongated paddles. So yeah, definitely has value for your money. If you like the Viva Pro 2, I see this as a personal upgrade. Not a drastic upgrade, but just a slight difference in stiffness and pop, which will in terms help you for hand battles and speed ups and stuff like that. It's just going to take a little bit longer to get used to. But yeah, if you've got a Viva Pro 2 and you're getting a Viva Pro 3, comment down below and let me know what you think of the differences in the two paddles since that's basically what I compared it to in this video. So the next time, I hope y'all doing good, staying safe, drink up plenty of water. Peace, y'all.